So here we are then, taking control of Esbjerg in the third tier of Danish football. They have had a torrid time in the last few seasons, being relegated twice from the top tier. They have been as high as, I think, third in the last maybe 10 or 15 years in the entirety of Denmark. They have just absolutely plummeted. It is our job to turn their fortunes around and get them back to the top of Danish football. As you can see then, looking at the league history, they were third in 2018-2019. I thought it was a lot longer ago than that, but no, it was very, very recent. They were then relegated in 2019-2020. They were then almost got themselves promoted back once again, and then last season finishing 11th place in the second tier dropping them down to the third tier of Danish football. We are going to have a task on our hands. However, season one should be somewhat easier because we are 1-91 to 91 to get promoted. We are by far the best team in the league. By a, a fair distance, we are the best team in the league. If you look at the best 11, there is one player in it who isn't ours, and that is Nikolai Thomason. So we should be getting ourselves promoted, hopefully in season one, and if we don't, I might find myself out of a job. So from a formation standpoint and asking our assistant, who, by the way, is Raphael van der Vaart, who is a former Dutch international, um, he has basically suggested this is what we should play. This is our best 11. And going purely on star ability right now, a right winger and a centre-back is arguably where we may maybe need to look at strengthening. Although, because we are clearly the best team in the league, we can probably get away with not doing it. We do also have some transfer budget to spend, and I'm thinking maybe we don't spend it early days because we might need that money in the next two or three seasons. I know it's only £115,000, but we are we we still need to try and climb up these leagues. We can't just expect to win the league. A quick check as well of the league rules. So we play in the preliminary phase. There are 20 games, 11 teams. So we play each team twice. And then I'm going to click promotion because I assume that's where we're going to be. There's going to be another 10 games to play. So it's only a 30 game season. It's a nice quick season in the second or two division, which is the third division of Denmark. I want to check as well when it comes to non-Danish players. Is there a rule for non-Danish players? Treated as EU? Uh, all African? Is that all African? Play oh my word. We can buy anyone from Africa and they're counted as EU. That's that's interesting. Obviously, EU as well. We've got the European Free Trade, Faroe Islands and Ukraine are all in there. So we could go nuts. I'm trying to find the rule to see how many Danish players we need. I don't think there's a rule. I think the only rule is we have a 25-man squad and that's it. So we've got not a small squad, but we've just got a 25-man squad and that is it. Which means we can go nuts and buy players from all over the world, which is something that I am definitely going to be doing. Looks like as well we've got a few decent youth prospects as well coming through. Some uh, two two star players, four two star players in there, a whole bunch of four to five star potential as well. Our B team doesn't really have many players in it at all. Do they even play in a competition? No, no, they don't. So I'm going to go through and do the usual pre-season business now. So hopefully we're going to come back with some new transfers as well. Not expecting too many new players. We're probably looking at free transfers, and then. I guess we'll jump into a game which might be against Thisted. Thisted FC. Nice. And if you are looking forward to this series, do please consider hitting the like button on the videos. Hit the subscribe button as well. Tell me how many seasons you think it will take for us to get back to, at the very least, the top tier of Danish football. Right, it's the day of the first match of the season and it is against Thisted. However, it is in the cup. We've also drawn them in the cup and then three days later we played them in the league. We have done two transfers so far and we're also going to try and earn a little bit more money by selling off some clauses. The first man to join the club is Eddie Gomez, a 33-year-old Guinea-Bissauan central defender. He's also part Danish, apparently used to play for Esbjerg before he then left to go to China, I believe. I brought him in because he's got 16 heading and 17 jumping reach. I'm not expecting Eddie to be here for five, six seasons. He's probably only going to be here for one season, but I want him to score lots of goals from corners. That's the plan. We have also brought in on loan Nigel Marengo, a Curacaon winger. He can play on either the left or the right wing, signed from Hirenveen. I brought him in on loan till the end of the season. He's not necessarily going to be playing a lot of football, but he gives us another option. And he's only young, which means he might get better, although he's not our player, so why do we care? 
Speaking of not our player, Raphael van der Vaart, obviously a former player for some very big clubs around the world and Tottenham. He has He's our assistant manager and he's his son. His son plays for us and I think he's just managed to con me into giving his son Danish lessons. So this is Damien. He's 16 years old. He might be good. He's probably a little bit too early to tell. But he basically said to me, hey, Damien van der Vaart can't speak particularly good Danish. Do you want to send him on a language course? And I went, yeah, sure. And then it clicked. That's his son. I'm just funding his son's education at this point. Right, clauses to sell. We can only sell, I think it's five, but it's only two players. We've got Mark Brink. 20% of his future sale will go. I mean, that's a big, is it a big bit of money? I don't think it is. I mean, 20%, we'll just sell it. I feel like it's he's not going to get sold for that amount of money. This one, however, this is interesting. Daniel Everson at Leicester. So 10% of his next transfer fee will go to us. And then we've also got after league appearances. The question is, is he their number one goalkeeper? If there are any Leicester fans about, um, I imagine you've probably got some opinions on this. They have Alex Smithies. Is he there in real life? Is he there in real life? And is he their number one goalkeeper? So they've got Smithies, they've got Everson, and they've obviously got Danny Ward. Those are probably their three best goalkeepers. Is Everson going to be playing? I'd argue he probably will be. With that in mind, I think we'll sell this. It gives us £206,000, but we'll hold on to these three because, in theory, he is going to start playing some games for them. So we'll sell that because £206,000 is going to go a long way. And it also means... We can now do this and give ourselves a little bit more wage budget and maybe bring in another player or two on a free transfer. And for some reason, if I go and search just for players that I know of, we have a lot of Jamaicans. I don't know why we know of a lot of Jamaican footballers. We've also got a lot of sort of American based footballers as well, which again, I'm not quite sure why they're there. But this is kind of the option that we've got for uh, free transfers. I'm going to have a look through, try and pick out one or two players that I think could help us out. I'm looking at, I think, as a left back because our left back getting on a bit, and maybe a right winger. Okay, so now it is the first day of the season, and we have ourselves a brand new signing. Jassin Kayat, 29-year-old Moroccan left-sided player. He could probably play on the right as well. Brought him in as a left back, as an attacking wing back. That's my plan, because I don't think we need to do a huge amount of defending in this league. And I say that because we've already played Thisted once and beat them 5-1. They did obviously score a goal, they went down to 10 men as well, but by that point, we were already 5-1 up. So, for the first game of the season, this is going to be our starting eleven. We've got two players in our squad that I want to build the team around, and we'll get to them in a minute. It's going to be Gadegaard in goal, Mortensen, Tranberg, Eddie Gomez, and Kayat in defence. Expect to see Gomez scoring goals from corners. Strunk and Larsen are two central midfielders. Those are going to be our key players in our squad. Jorgensen, Montano, Holton, and Simpson leading the lines. Strunk, I think, is probably our best player. He is only 22. He's about to turn 23. He is superb, I think, for this level of football. Strunk is a superb footballer. And his central midfield partner, Mads Larsen, I think also fits the bill. We're going to be playing him as a box-to-box -box midfielder, which I think he can do. Yes, he's missing a few bits here or there, but again, only 20 years old. We'll be 21 very soon, but I think we've got two very good, very young central midfielders that we can look to build a squad around for at least the next couple of years. Here we go then, the kickoff in the Danish third tier. And I'm expecting this to be quite a high-scoring game. To be honest, I'm expecting us to score maybe four or five goals in this. I'm hoping this did don't get a chance to score any themselves. Nine minutes on the clock, and we've got a first highlight. Holton forward. It's Jorgensen there at the back post. It's 1-0, nine minutes played. This is how I'm expecting this season to go. We should beat pretty much everybody. And if we don't, I think we've probably had an injury crisis because we are a fair distance better than the other teams in our league. Velasco's in on goal and Eddie Gomez has conceded a penalty. Luckily, Gomez only picked up a yellow card for that as well. I don't know whether they have double jeopardy in uh, the Danish third tier. It is awful goalkeeping. What was the keeper doing? He just wandered off his line. I don't even think that penalty should stand. He was off his line before the ball was kicked. Anyway, it doesn't matter. It's 1-1. And straight after that goal, there's another highlight. Literally, we scored a goal, they scored a goal, and then there's another highlight again, so maybe we can make it 2-1. We've got the ball through Holton. Right-hand side is Jorgensen. Loses out, Holton collects it. Loses out, though, and it's all the way back with the fisted goalkeeper. Kicked towards the halfway line. Intercepted by their goal scorer. Velasquez forward. Velasco is now in on goal, and our goalkeeper is horrendous at football. It's 2-1. What is going on? 
what is actually going on here? Both of their goals have been, well, one of them was a penalty, and that one was just poor goalkeeping. 20 minutes, and again, highlight starts. First thing we do is kick it straight to one of their players. I'm not really sure why or how we've managed to do that. Our goalkeeper's got no arms. He's got no arms or something. He doesn't want to go for anything. Larson with a free kick, curling effort just wide of the Thisted post. It is still 2-1 to Thisted. Larson with another free kick on the ground towards Simpson, the Canadian. I think he's Canadian, English and American. I think he's all three of those. It is Larson again, Mortensen. Get that ball upfield. It does manage to find Montano in the penalty area. Crosses in. Holton is there. And Emil Holton makes it 2-2. He's celebrating like we've just won the cup. We're drawing. I think he just did the Carlton dance as well. So match stats wise, we're actually playing a lot better than they are. They've just had two chances and scored them both. Jorgensen controls the ball well. Their keeper makes a decent enough save. It's a corner though. This is where Eddie Gomez rises highest, makes it 3-2. Strunk is the man to take it with a yellow card. Frustratingly, towards Kayat, not Gomez, should have been Gomez. Strunk collects it, Montano outside the area, goes backwards to Mortensen, ball forward towards Holton. It's nowhere near him. It's going to end that highlight. Another one begins. Still a lot of time to play in the first half. It's been quite an open game. Strunk's ball forward, not the best. It's now or Orosi, could be his name. Aga's not going to get there. Mortensen with a good slide. Larson's ball forward doesn't find one of our players. Montano controls it. Back to Eddie Gomez, who I was hoping would be our talisman for the season. I was hoping to get a 33-year-old Eddie Gomez in. Everyone loves the fact that we've got a nice central defender who's experienced and has some ability... That's a free kick? It's a free kick. Okay, is this a yellow card? Red card? What's going on? It's a red card. It's a red card. They've got their player, Lagard, not not his name, Lagergaard, has been sent off. We've got a free kick. Strunk is the man to take it. Towards Gomez, please. It's not towards Gomez. It's towards Tranberg at the back post. He heads over the bar. And we're still not at half time. We're still going. Kayat. Down the line to Montano. Larson's going to go for a run towards the centre circle. Big lump upfield. The keeper's come out a long way from his line. It's on the ground. It's Strunk. Strunk should score. And Nicholas Strunk does score. He makes it 3-2. We are back in front. And realistically, we never should have been behind. Final few minutes of the first half. And you can see there the match momentum graph that's just popped up. It's been all us. It's been all Esbjerg. And then just a small just hint of Thisted when they scored their two goals in very quick succession. Jorgensen collects this ball, loses out to, I nearly said Daniel Agger. It's not Daniel Agger, it's crossed in, back post, and our goalkeeper's the worst goalkeeper in the world. How have they scored three? Well, I did say I was expecting this to be a high-scoring game, but I wasn't expecting it to be 3-3. Three, three. Our goalkeeper, Gardegaard's on a 6-4. I don't know what's going on there. We've got a free kick through Larson. Well outside the area, but it is shooting territory, and that is a ridiculously good save from the keeper. Corner for Strunk to take it, one of our three goal scorers. Where is it going to go? Eddie Gomez is the man. It's Holton. Holton heads over the bar. I'm telling him to put it on Gomez's head. It's not once found Gomez. Right, half time is 3-3. Three, three. Uh, thrash arms, that was awful. That was absolutely awful. Defenders, you've been the worst. I'm furious. I mean, you're already fired up. I've just made that worse. No changes for us into the second half. But I'm looking at our defenders and just thinking, can we change all of them? I guess, apart from Tranberg. Thisted are in on goal again. And I think our goalkeeper, has he made a save? He's not made a save, he's gone wide. Can I point out, Thisted have had five shots, three of them on target and scored three goals. Which means our goalkeeper has literally not made a single save so far in this match. 65th minute and we've nicked it through Larson, but he just lumps it forward to nobody. Which is not really what you want to be doing. This did kick upfield. Gomez intercepts it. Strunk towards Jorgensen. Takes a touch. Puts it in the bottom corner. We retake the lead for the third time in the match. And let's not throw this away. Right, I'm going to do some changes. And I don't really know whether it's a good idea or not. But we are going to take off Mortensen. And we've got no right back on the bench. Right, what we've done is we put Kayat over to our right back position. Which is a position he can't really play. But... It's fine, I guess. He's on a 6-7 at the moment. We've taken off Mortensen. We brought on Lauridsen, who is our realistically our number one right back. Do we want to play Ten Hove? Ten Hove is... Is he better than Gardegaard? Gardegaard... Gardegaard's rubbish. Why am I playing Gardegaard? Right, we've only done that one change for the moment. But I'm keeping an eye on our goalkeeper, because if he makes or fails to make another save, that is him being subbed off. And have we just hit the post? I think Eddie Gomez had a chance, it was saved, it fell to somebody else, and then we kicked it straight into the post. 
Strunk with a corner for us. It's towards Wagner. It's cleared. Strunk gets it back. On the ground to Montano. Strunk again. Now lawrenson has gone down. And that's going to be a penalty. Because I imagine we don't have VAR. Because I think that might have been outside the area. It is 5-3. Jorgensen with a... Was that his hat-trick? Did they just say that completes his hat-trick? I think they did. I think Jorgensen scored a hat-trick. Well, for the first game on camera, I certainly picked an exciting one, didn't I? We've had eight goals so far. And there's still... I guess there's five minutes left to play. Because nothing's happened in the second half. Right, we're going to do some changes. Strunk is coming off for Hans Holberg. What else do we do? Steve Simpson's done nothing. So we'll do... Do we do Novikov or Chong? I think we do Novikov. Novikov, I think, is pretty good. 23 years old, Ukrainian striker. I think he's pretty good. I imagine we can only do three subs, so I'm not going to try and do any more. Velasquez with a free kick for Thisted and almost making it 5-4. Still not over. One minute of injury time to play. Holzberg, big kick upfield intercepted but Larson collects over us and Vestergaard's given Larson a little kick we've got a free kick on the halfway line is Tramberg to take it then right hand side is loads of space if we want to use it are we going to use it we've gone to Holzberg instead lumps it forward to nobody I don't think this is a highlight I think this is one of those highlights to make it seem like something might happen but nothing's going to happen Gero with the ball goes for a run down the right plays it back ball lump lumped upfield to nobody Tramberg to Lauridsen it's full time what was the point in that highlight? I don't know. It's full time. We've won the game. I feel like we didn't deserve to win that game, although we did. Guard to guard. Basic. Guard to guard cost us all three of those goals, right? Arguably not the penalty, but still. And immediately following that game, this is a big bit of news. We've been paid £26,000 because Daniel Everson has played a match for Leicester, which means Everson is their number one goalkeeper, which means I was right to not take the money, which is good. And speaking of goalkeepers, we need to get a new one because basically I've worked out that our current number one isn't very good at all. So obviously we've only played one game in the league, but we are currently sat on a 100% record along with Hellerup, Our House, AB and B93. So, you know, it's, it's all to play for. No draws so far in the first round of fixtures. I think we're going to go forward now to possibly this match here against Our House, who I believe are going to be one of the tougher teams in the league. We've got Koldig, Ross Gilder, who I think both of them aren't particularly great. Hellerup, currently top of the table. I imagine they've just played a bad team. I don't know, but that's where we're going to go for. We're going to go into sort of mid-September time. It's now the 1st of September. It is 6am and the transfer window has shut. And we've done four more bits of transfer business. And this might give you a clue of my plan for building the squad. It probably won't because it's absolute madness what I've done. But, you know, it might help. It probably it won't at all. What am I on about? First of all, signing on a free transfer, an American winger called Shandon Hopiu. Might be how it's pronounced. I don't know. 23 years of age, 91 games under his belt, which is a lot. But most of them are at non-MLS level. Five games at Seattle. But he's got apparently four and a half star potential. Probably won't be playing too often, despite the fact that he has a regular starter in his contract. Joining on a loan spell from our feeder club, Ustenda, is Manuel Asifo, a 19-year-old Belgian centre-back, who I think is actually just pretty good. If he was... Basically if, basically, if we had the chance to buy him, I definitely would want to buy him. I don't think it's going to happen. But the fact that we can bring in a 19-year-old on loan of this quality, I'll take it. And he's costing us nothing. Also signing from one of our feeder clubs is William Hondemark, signed from Barnsley. For some reason, we have Barnsley as a feeder club, and I don't know why. An Irish central midfielder, but can also play as a right back, which is kind of why I wanted him in. I didn't necessarily want him in to play as a right back, but we have one right back, and Hondemark can basically give us a little bit more depth in that position. And he's actually a pretty good box-to-box -box midfielder, which is obviously a position that we play. And again, he's costing us nothing on loan. And finally, we needed a new goalkeeper. Zeus de la Paz is that man. Formerly of Oldham and PSV, I think it was, and Nuneaton and Cincinnati Dutch Lions and Oakland. He's had a career. He's certainly had a career. He's already come in, played three games for us, let in four goals, kept one clean sheet, but it doesn't matter because we score goals for fun. Since you were last with me, we've beat Colding 5-0. We beat Ross Gilder 3-1. We beat Hellerup 5-3. We beat our house Fremad in the Dutch second round of the Cup 3-2. This one was a little bit closer than I would have liked. So, yeah, I mean, we win games. Basically, we win games. We are very good for our level of football. And I think even though we're only four or five games into the season, it's pretty obvious that we're, we're probably going to be winning the league, right? 
We are only top of the table by two points. Our house and AB are just behind us. But they have drawn, which I assume... Oh, it's not even against each other. Hellerup and Frem are the two teams they've drawn against. So at some point, we are probably going to lose a game. And I feel, feel like our house or AB are going to be the team that are going to beat us. Anyway, we are now going to go forward to the 17th of September for this our house match. I think this could be the game that we lose. 